Good morning. Um, it's Shannon. I wanted to do another garden update. It's been really, really raining and the garden has exploded. There's been a lot of growth. Um, the corn that I put down about a week ago has started to sprout. So let's get into the garden and see what's going on here. I want to start off over at my little raised bed. Look at the growth on the basil. These buds have started to pop out. I was just here, not even two days ago, to pull all these off because it encourages growth. You don't want it to go to seed um, in the flowers. And here are my peppers. I actually harvested a lot of these um, shishito peppers earlier this week. This is a really, really prolific plant. Oh, this one might be ready soon. And then here are my banana peppers. If you remember from the earlier videos, this plant wasn't doing so well, um, in part due to user error. <laughs> I had an ant infestation in this bed and I read that white vinegar repels the ants. So I came out here and I doused the bed with white vinegar and it kind of drooped my plants and they've been struggling to like come back but with the help of the rain it started to really really bounce so I'm happy to see that because I've been sharing my peppers with my neighbors and they're really enjoying them as well um okay let's head over oh let's look at these straw so my straw bells are finished being conditioned pretty much I'm just waiting for my herb garden up front um to get a little bit more established before I move the cilantro and the other stuff back here but sometimes in the morning um, I notice that there are little tiny mushrooms that sprout up and they're really really cute they grow kind of in little zigzags and um, the funny thing is that they're gone usually by noon they kind of like wilt down and disappear all right so we're over here now at my other bed this is my palette garden with the tomatoes and the squash and stuff i mean the zucchini i actually have a big one going on down there i don't know if you can see see those this plant's starting to get more and more established i did not expect for it to grow for this long it's just really really growing i think i've got some uh powdery mildew i think it's called because my leaves are starting to yellow. So I'm gonna have to treat that this week. And to be honest with you, I'm gonna have to Google how to treat it because I've never <laughs> never done it before. I just know what it is from watching um, videos and learning online, just like everything else in my garden. This is my first um, season planting outside. I've always had um, like a little patio with maybe a few herbs and things, but to this scale, it's my first time, so I'm really, really just learning as I go. Got some tomatoes that are ready. So every day, I come out here and I, I root around. You can see, see the tomato, the tomatoes kind of falling over here. It's because it rained so heavily about four days this week, and I gotta stake the plant, put it back up. But I've got some blooms going here. Hopefully those create some more tomatoes for me. I got two beefsteaks from this plant so far. Um, and see the tomatoes in there. So once I'm done with the video, I'll come through and I'll harvest everything. Um, I want to point out my grass is low or lower than usual. If you can see underneath the... Um, that bed, that, that taller grass is usually how high I like to keep it. And the reason that it's so low is because um, about two days after I finished saying, oh, my bunny, I have a bunny in my yard and I love this rabbit he visits. And everyone was like, oh, that bunny is gonna eat your tomatoes and he's gonna attack your garden. I was like, no, no, I planted for him. He's got clovers over there. Like, I don't have to worry about it. That's the only area he visits. Well, this rabbit came over and got into my tomatoes. And I was like, oh, John, you gotta cut the grass because, ooh, it is humid out here. Oh, oh it's humid. I'm already sweating. <laughs> anyway, I was like, go cut the grass. That rabbit got into my garden bed. And then there've been a few other pests that I've noticed. Um, I have mealybugs 
It's a uh, Japanese, I've got Japanese be beetles. Let me go take you over here again, just so you can see the damage that those things do on your leaves. They make this like lacy holes. And that's how you can tell that they've been through your plant. The um, woman at the garden center told me that they come up out of the ground when the ground gets hot and they come up to mate on the plants. It's just like gross. Can you mate like on the ground and stop eating my plants? But I guess not. So speaking of pests and um, garden problems, I think I have a bit of blight going on. You see that? And that's caused, I believe, from lack of airflow which I'm not really sure if that's the only cause because if you, you can see that I've trimmed the tomato really, really well. This plant is really airy. Um, before the rain, it was st standing upright. So I'm not really quite sure what that blight is. If anybody wants to comment and um, let me know or if you have any experience getting rid of it or what I should do to keep it from spreading, I would really appreciate the help because I love those tomato plants back there. I'm really, really enjoying growing them. So um, now I'm walking up front to show what's been going on up here. I put some new straw bales um, in the garden because I want to plant up front. The light up here is fantastic compared to the backyard. Um, and we have this ugly green box and I'm just gonna plant around it on these straw bales. I might get two or three more um, these are in the process of being conditioned. Again, I th the rain has been really, really helpful um, for me because you condition those for about 10 or 12 days and it's a process of putting in um, the fertilizer on top and putting water over it and really, really soaking the fertilizer into the bale. And you do that for 10 days and then it's ready to be planted into once your plants are old enough to plant into. So um, once the plants grow up, out of that my goal is for it to cover or at least hide a little bit that ugly green box because I really don't like the way that it looks so anyway um I want to show the gladioli are blooming again I've got some more over there that you can see I'm gonna trim and bring into the house um and what brings us over to my pumpkin bed. So I redistributed my pumpkin seedlings, the Big Macs pumpkins that I bought, that I started into this bed. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep all of them, but we'll see, because these pumpkins are gonna get huge. Like if I grow them properly, they'll be about 30 pounds. So we'll see. It's my first year growing all of this, so I'm not super confident that they will get that big. But again, it's been raining and I fertilized and I put compost in this bed. Um, and that brings me to my next little garden <laughs> quandary or whatever. But I have tomato seedlings coming up in this bed. So let me show you my tomato seedlings that are in the little pots. And then I will compare those to what's over here in this bed because I'm not sure if they're actual seedlings or if they're seeds. I mean, or um, or weeds, sorry. So, see these seedlings? How they've got fuzz along the stem? See that fuzz that's on them and how they're like purpley reddish? Okay, all of them are like that. That's just a characteristic of tomato seedlings. So when I come over here, to look at my little pumpkin patch see like this that is definitely a weed I know that but this if you would focus it would be helpful oh no okay let's pick another one I've got a few patches here's one see this oh well, there we go focus you can see the hairs on this and it's also that purpley red color. Um, there's several little seedlings coming up and they all look like tomato seedlings. Look at that little batch of them over here. I did not plant 
tomatoes in this purposefully. Um, what I think happened, gosh, it is really hot out here. What I think happened is when I put the, I put tomatoes in my compost and when I put the compost out on top of the pumpkin patch, I believe the seeds were still in there. So they're sprouting because they're in dirt now. I didn't mean for that to happen, but I guess that's just a hazard of not knowing, you know, or putting seeds in your compost. It didn't even occur to me. Like I was just throwing produce into the compost and um, would stir it up and everything. And I wasn't really thinking, oh, you know what, if there are seeds in this, they're gonna sprout later, but you live and you learn, what are you gonna do? Uh, my neighbor recently put in a, a fence along our divide. Oh, it's really hot. I'm like sweating out here so much. Sorry guys. I'm so wet. <laughs> my, um, anyway, my neighbor put in a fence and usually when you have neighbors on all sides of you, like we do, you'll split the cost of the fence. Well, he just put it in. And when I went to ask him, Hey, how much do we owe you? You know, cause you know, fences are expensive. He was like, no, no, don't worry about it. I just wanted to get it done. Um, I don't want to stress you guys out financially, which it would have been because the, I think the fence, the quote that he got was about $2,300, he said. And so we would have owed half of that. Just like, oh God, we got to come up with just over a thousand bucks. So luckily he was um, kind enough to put it in, but he did say, he's like, oh, I see you have a garden over there. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely do. Um, he's like, don't worry about the money. Just kick me some tomatoes and some of your produce. I love vegetables. I like, Absolutely. I will kick you all the tomatoes and extra um, that I have. So when I saw those seedlings coming up, just to bring the story back around, <laughs> I have a tendency to ramble. Anyway, when I saw these, um, what I think are tomato seedlings in my pumpkin patch, I thought, well, I, I can't keep all these tomatoes, but... I think I may because I have neighbors to share them with that enjoy um, fresh produce. My other neighbor in the back there, um, she saw me out and she's like, you have any cherry tomatoes? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I do. Right now I do. When the kids come back, probably not. They're in um, Florida with my in-laws for the rest of the summer right now, but we'll see. I'm definitely happy to share. I've got plenty of stuff. So let's keep going. This, this is my herb garden. I put it up on my little outside table um because i noticed there are a lot of little hopping bugs and gnats and things into it kind of chewing up my cucumbers and see the leaves these are just the little um i think they're co cotyledons cotyledons i'm not really sure how to say that word it's just like the um the placenta for the seed so what it what these leaves do is they're the first to sprout and they're the first to photosynthesize to the plant so that the plant can start to grow its true leaves. So once these have probably another set, these are my okra plants. Um, once these have another set of leaves and are a little bit taller, I'll transplant them over into those hay bales up front that I've got. These are some more tomatoes. You can see these are heirloom um, slice, like beefsteak slicer type things. They're getting big. And then something that I wanted to point out that I find really, really confusing um, is that this is my mammoth basil. And you can see it's huge. It's really, really prolific. It's doing good. Um, it's got those nice, um, I don't even know what to call this, these crunchy leaves. They're not crunchy to touch, but they look like they would be because of all that texture that they have. And then when they start to get bigger, the texture kind of goes away. But um, anyway, I planted the mammoth basil at the same time that I planted the Genovese basil. And these sprouts are just taking so long to get any true leaves. Those are just the little baby leaves. These are just the little first two leaves that plant up. You can tell because they don't even look like basil yet. It's just these two little sprouts. And then you see these other two those tiny little um, teardrop shaped leaves. Those are actual like basil leaves and the plant is gonna eat these and they'll fall off or disintegrate or whatever. So these are chives here. And this is another slow growing herb that I was surprised has taken so long. So I planted the cilantro, the chives, 
all the basil. Pretty, I, yeah, actually, I planted all of this at the same time, okay? Um, with the herbs, what I did was I made a spiral at my finger in this pot or in all of them, and I just sewed the seeds around, you know, in that spiral. So just to encourage a lot of growth and like thickness. The chives are taking their sweet time. I think every two days I come out here and there's a new little tiny sprout, a little tiny growth that's going, but there are so many, there are so many seeds inside this little um, pot. So I'm so shocked that it, like more of them haven't sprouted considering how humid and how much rain we've been getting. It rained about, I wanna say about three days this week really really heavy um and that's just typical summer weather for the region i live in maryland so it's great for growth but i'm not really sure why the chives are taking quite so long okay here we go let's look down into the this is my corn bed here and um i planted this maybe about four or five days ago and it's already started to come up it might be a week ago barely barely a week ago all my neighbors are leaving so, um, and here are the sunflowers. So if you go by, you can see how huge they've become. Oh God, seriously, dude, drive away. Anyway, um, these sunflower sprouts have gotten huge quickly. Due in part, I think largely in part to the fact that I moved them um, from where they were over here closer to the house and underneath this ledge there's a lot of shade that this little bed gets and i underestimated the amount of shade and the sunflowers weren't doing so great over here there's a lot of clay in this soil you see that all that stuff is clay and usually i'll dig it up and put some topsoil but the only thing that i've got over here is basil and this will grow totally fine in um, partial shade it'll do totally fine in clay. Basil is a really prolific plant, so I don't really have to worry about that. Um, let's see, what else is going on that I want to show off in my garden? Um, I can't think of anything else. <laughs> anyway, that's it for my garden update today. Um, I hope that you have a good week, and I'll talk to you soon.